Hi, Ty. Janie McCauley from How you Associated doing? Press. Good, thanks. Um, the other in game one, maybe you guys put some emphasis on stopping the three-point line. What what adjustments do you make in this game to do the same, but also keep Kevin from going down the middle untouched <laughs> and and also get more from Tristan Thompson? Well, we you know we got to stop the ball. That's the most important thing, and um, we can't let Durant get easy baskets like that. And with him being probably you know one of the best scorers in the NBA, you can't give guys like that easy opportunities at the basket. So we got to do a good job of stopping the basketball, but we also got to get back out to shooters. So um, one ha- one guy has to stop the ball, and the other guys have to get back and you know get to Steph and Clay and those guys. But we got to stop the basketball first. Um, with Tristan, um, he's going to be fine. You know they're doing a good job of hitting him with two or three bodies to keep him off the offensive glass. But you know with him running the floor. Um, with his will, with his, with his passion for the game, he's going to be fine. So we're not worried about Tristan. Third row on the right. Tom Haverster, ESPN. Uh, Clay Thompson is in a little bit of a slump here in the postseason, but how, how quickly can that guy catch fire, and how does that dictate how you guys, <laughs> how you guys guard and making sure you don't get inside your head thinking that like, he can't hit that next shot? I mean, he's one of the best shooters we, we've ever seen, and for him to be in a slump is crazy. I mean, you know, he's missing shots or whatever. Not in a great rhythm because you know Steph and Clay's. I mean Steph and um, KD's playing at a high at a high clip, and they have been in the playoffs. So, you know maybe be a little bit out of rhythm. But far as you know, off and slumping, I don't believe that. A guy like that is never slumping. So, as a coach and as a player, how much did being hot in a game dictate whether you're going to stay in the game or not? Like if Kyrie hits a few shots in a row, but he should be coming out, are you going to leave him in there to keep that hot hand going? Yeah, we did it in Boston. You know, he had a you know great yep. third quarter, and you know we kept him in for the first two minutes of the fourth quarter to let him ride it. And um, that's what this game's all about. When guys are hot, you got to ride them. And did that change as a coach? Like your feelings as a player, did that change, or you had the same mentality? Same like you mentality. should keep riding that hot. Oh hand. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next row back, uh, Ty Terry Polito from the Blind Dealer. When you uh, looked at the tape, and you had mentioned before about all the turnovers and things like that. What did you see looking at that that was causing so many of those? Um, well, we know Golden State's a great defensive team, but I thought someone was unforced, and then a lot of them they did force, but they did a good job of helping and then getting back out to shooters or stabbing at the ball and getting back out, playing cat and mouse. So when we make a move to the basket, we just got to be decisive, you know, taking it to the basket or making the pass. And I thought they did a good job of just playing in between, uh, making us, you know, be off guard. So, you know, when we make a move, we got to be direct what we're going to do. If not, move to basketball. Uh, the fast break points, I forgot what it was. It's almost like a, 20, a plus 20 for them. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Well, in terms of trying to get more fast break points for yourself, I think there was like 27 to 7 or something like that in that yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, when we get stops, we got to get out. We got to play with pace. You know, we got to play in transition. Um, they're a great team in a half court, you know, as far as loading up and yeah. taking away what they want to take away. So when we get stops, we got to get out and run and play with pace. It's uh, uh, Tim Bonas from the Washington Post. Uh, where on the list of LeBron's accomplishments do you rank the fact that he's won a road game in 30 straight playoff series in terms of being able to go on the road and have success for such an extended period of time? I, I couldn't really hear you. I'm sorry. No. Where, do you, where on LeBron's list of accomplishments do you rank the fact that he's gone on the road in 30 straight playoff series and won a road game? And as a coach, how much confidence does that give you in your team to know that you have a guy that's been able to go on the road and obviously tough environments to get wins year after year like that. I mean, well, he's a great player. And, you know, anytime you want to win a championship or you want to win, you have to win on the road. And we understand that. And, you know, with Golden State having home court the last three years, you know, it's going to be tough. And you got to win on the road to be great. Howard, back right. Howard, back with Bleacher Report. Uh, Ty, if you go back to March, April, when you guys were struggling a little bit and people were kind of wondering what you guys could become again in, in, the, uh, in the playoffs, what was your level of concern at the time about this team's ability to get back to like a championship form that would get you to, to this spot? I'm, how did you say before? You said yeah, the regular but, season? Yeah, le- late in the regular season, uh, that last couple months where you guys, like defensively, you were off and there was a lot of concern about, you know, right. what was your level of concern then that you could get back to the kind of play that would get you here? Um, I wasn't concerned. You know, um, my biggest concern was getting healthy. I thought once we got healthy and uh, we got all our pieces together, we can kind of figure out how we wanted to play, what style of basketball. Um, defensively, I just knew we're more of a scheme defensive team. Like we can't, you know, we got to scheme and take things away. And in the playoffs, we're a lot better defensively than we are in a regular season. You, you were a veteran of some Laker teams where uh, flipping the switch was like the, the whole phrase that went on and, and we saw it I don't happen. like that phrase. So, so but did... <laughs> When, when your team took off in this playoffs, though, 
that was the perception. Like, oh, okay, well, they flipped the switch. Is that no. what truth is there, if any, to that? Um, I mean, I thought we played better. We were playing better in the playoffs, but we got healthy. Um, we had a set rotation. And I think defensively, we was able to lock in on certain teams we played and was able to take away what we wanted to take away. So um, if you want to say flip the switch, I just think defensively, we got better a lot defensively. And that opened up our offense for us. Kelly, last question. Up Shelly Smith, ESPN. Ty, you said, um, people have said that you guys plan to try to play more physical. Do you have to establish that early in order not to draw fouls early? And what yeah, do you plan I mean, to do? I mean, you have to be the first one to hit. And I thought they hit us first. And you have to be physical. The game is physical. You got to be, got to bring a physicality to the game one through five. And I thought last game we weren't as physical as we needed to be. We're all bodies. Let them run free. So we got to be a, do a better job of being on bodies, being physical, and bringing the contact to the game. Yes, ma'am.